Good morning. Before we get into announcements today, please stand if you are able for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome back to the studio for this week's announcements. I'm your host, Caleb Nolman. Now let's get right into this. AP test registration is open through November 11th. You must register for the tests now to take them in the spring. Students enrolled in AP classes will receive a bill in class with cost information. Please register and pay for your tests in the library. The weekly student e-ticket winner is Cheyenne Evans. Please come to the Dean's office to pick up your prize. The staff winners are Mrs. Burnett and Mrs. McIver. Your prizes are in your mailbox. The Columbus East and North Combined Color Guard will be having auditions November 15th, 17th, and 18th from 6 to 9 p.m. in the Columbus North Band Room. Anyone from 6th to 12th grade is welcome and no experience is necessary. The East Fall Musical, Ranked, will be performed on November 18th, 19th, and the 20th. Starting times are at 7 p.m. on Friday and Saturday and at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday. Ticket prices are $12 at the door, but can be bought in advance online for a lower price. The East softball team will have a call-out meeting today for girls interested in playing this year's co This conference will be from 6 to 7 p.m. in room 104. Athletes and parents or guardians are welcome to attend. It's only November 2nd, but many seniors are already applying to colleges with an early action plan. Early action and early decision plans allow for students to apply before regular decision. This allows applicants to receive decisions much sooner, typically by mid-December. Students are able to apply to multiple schools with an early action plan. However, early decision is binding to one school, so make sure to consider your options before applying with an early decision plan. Now to Corey Shooter with this week's weather report. Thank you, Caleb. Today, we'll be seeing a temperature of 69 degrees with light winds and 70% humidity. The next two days will reach the 70s, being tomorrow with 74 degrees and light winds, along with a 74% humidity. Friday will reach 76 degrees, but with 14 mile an hour winds and 59% humidity. Both days have a 10% chance of rain. That's all we have for weather. Now it's time for our very own Matthew Degner with the Matthew Minute. Welcome to this week's edition of the Matthew Minute, where news topics are presented in a brief format. I'm your host, Matthew Dagner, and we're starting off discussing the Russian banker Oleg Tinkov. Monday night, Mr. Tinkov went online and renounced his Russian citizenship, and the next wave of billionaires fleeing the Kremlin. An online statement, he said, quote, I can't and won't be associated with a fascist country that started war with a peaceful neighbor. Oleg Tinkov founded Tinkov Banks, providing service to around 20 million customers. As more and more of Russia's wealthiest continue to flee, questions are being raised about the future of their economy. Back in the U.S., it appears that the Supreme Court is leaning in favor of eliminating affirmative action, which would be yet another landmark case enacted by the new conservative supermajority. Liberal judges are saying that the dubbed race-neutral standards promote racial equality and diversity on campus. The conservative judges are claiming that these processes are biased and unfair, specifically against Asians and Asian Americans. Judge Neil Gorsuch stated that he compares the use of affirmative action to race quotas, which previously have been banned by the court. As admission deadlines ended yesterday, this story may have big impacts on students for years to come. More updates on this story next week. 
In Indiana news, Richard M. Allen, a 50-year-old man, has been charged with the murders of Abigail Williams, age 13, and Liberty German, age 14. The now-known Delphi murders have puzzled investigators for five and a half years. Allen is now being held without bail, and when asked about his arrest, his family said that, quote, it was a very sad, yet very humbling experience. Finally, in local news, the trial of Patrick E. Doyle has been postponed for the second time, as a witness was not able to testify. It is now scheduled for February 2023, but the trial date was originally in 2021, and was delayed due to pre-trial publicity. Doyle is being charged with the murder of Heather Ann Stuver, who was found 18 days after her death lying in a shallow grave with blunt force trauma to the head. That wraps up this week's top stories. Signing off, I'm Matthew Degner, and remember to stay informed. That's all we have for today. Stay tuned next week for more announcements. For the crew at East Media, I'm Caleb Nolman. Thank you for watching, and remember to take care of yourself, others, and the place. And as always, try to be the best part of someone's day.